may be seen. Good morning, everybody. For those of you that haven't met yet, I'm a lot of you that are here today. My name is Terry Pace, and I'm one of the pastors of New Life Church. And I just want to say thank you, Rob, for coming out today to support Connors and the Chandlers. I have to tell you, these are two of the best families I've ever met in my life. I've told them this over and over, and I mean it. This family worships Jeff in the heaven in that hospital room, and I just know how much this family loves the Lord, and, and you all love Jeff so much, you love this family so much, that's why you're here today, but on behalf of Aaron and the family, I just have to take a minute uh, for them and say thank you. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for all the messages. Thank you for all the phone calls. Uh, thank you for all the food you brought to their house over and over. Just the way you wrapped your arms around them. It just means the world to them. I just pray that you won't stop today. Because it doesn't end here today. And they're going to need you in the days, the weeks, the months to come. This family, they're going to need you. And I know you're going to show up for them. I know you're going to be there for them. And as one of their pastors, I just want to say thank you for showing up for them. And, and Aaron, the kids, David, all of you, I just want to tell you, I am so honored to be here today to talk about your son. Talk about your husband. Talk about your dad. Talk about your brother. And your brother-in-law. I'm honored. He's one of the best men I've ever known. I love this guy. He made all of our lives better. That's why we're all here today, because he made our lives so much better. But we've shed tears together. Many of us, we've shed tears together. So many of you came to the hospital. I just was overwhelmed with all of you coming to the hospital to see them. But I know this, in the midst of the tears, and the grief, I know all of you made that decision that we're going to celebrate Jeff's life because there's so much to celebrate about Jeff Connor. There, I, I just, I don't know when I've met anybody in my life more full of life than Jeff Connor. I really don't. And he was the consummate prankster. You may ever had a prank played on you by Jeff Connor? I mean, at the house, anytime the kids got up to leave the table, I'm talking about for 30 seconds. Their plate was gone. They come back to the table and they're like, Dad, where's my plate? He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I have no idea what you're talking about. How many times is that happened? Or Erin would come down in the morning. She goes into the, you know, girl needs some coffee in the morning, right? Any ladies in the house know you need your coffee in the morning? She comes downstairs to get her coffee. Coffee cup's gone. Jeff, where's my coffee cup? Aaron, I haven't seen it. I have no idea where it's at. Jeff Connor, where is my coffee? Okay, here it is, right over here. That is just Jeff Connor, man. And he was always singing and dancing and whistling and enjoying life. And he would all the time come up to Aaron and go, do I look okay? I looked, I'm looking good today. And then one of his favorite things, how many of you had this happen with Jeff? Jeff would go, is there anything up my nose? <laughs> do you think, do you think in there? I, Take a look. Anything at all? That is Jeff Connor. And so today, we're going to laugh the way he did. That goofy little dick that we just all love so much. He just put us all at ease. He put everybody at ease that was around him. Everybody wanted to be around Jeff Connor. And here's the reason that we laugh and the reason we worship today. Is because Jeff knew Jesus. Jeff was a man after God's own heart. He loved the Lord with all his heart, soul, mind, and strength. Everybody that knew Jeff knew that he loved the Lord. And so although we are grieving, we, do, we grieve different than the rest of the world. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, he made it clear, he said, Those of you that are in Christ, you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who has no hope. Today we grieve with a hope and assurance that we know where Jeff's at. We know he's going to be in heaven for all eternity. And then so many of this family, almost all of them probably, know that you're going to have a glad reunion one day with him. And so that's why we grieve different than the rest of the world. And so we're about to worship. And that's what Aaron says. She said, I just want to worship today. And that's the heart of this family. They just love to worship the Lord. But before we worship, if you would, just please join me. Let's just pray and just ask the Lord to be with us here today. God, I know that you are in this place. My chief prayer all week long has been that this family 
and be comforted by God's amazing grace, which is all sufficient. And nothing, absolutely nothing can separate us from the love of God is what your word says. <coughs> It's through Him alone, through Christ alone, that we are comfortable, Lord. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that is in this place. Thank you that your word tells us you're close to the broken heart. You're close to those that are crushed in spirit. Thank you that you're going to be here. You're going to minister to this family. You're going to minister to all these friends, Lord, because we need it. We need you right now. But we know you are close, and we know you are here. And so that's why right now we're going to worship you, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Everybody said, Amen. 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 If you would, let's stand. I know that we all know that Jeffrey David Connor, 51, of Roland, Arkansas, went to be with the Lord on December the 9th, 2023. He was born on January the 14th, 1972, in Wheat Ridge, Colorado, to David Connor and Sandra Connor. Jeff was known for his quick wit, his silly laugh. His ability to make anyone around him feel really special. He's always interested in what was new with you, what was going on in your life. And he would ask questions about your, your life and your family. He was always trying to put you in front of him and shine the light of Christ to everybody he met. He was passionate about his work in pharmaceutical sales, helping those find physical healing through medicine. He was extremely kind. He was generous. He was courageous leading his life with humility and intentional love, and his heart was filled with gratitude no matter the circumstances, no matter what was going on with him. I went with him the last time he took chemo, and I think it was the very last time he went. That was that Monday, Aaron, and I remember walking in that place, and he lit up that place, just lit it up. He was making all these nurses just laugh, and it was just so Jeff Connor. And I know this, that he leaves a huge hole in the heart's of the, these family members, and he's going to be deeply missed by all of us. And, but we're thankful for the gift of his life and the promise of heaven. And he is preceded to death by his grandparents, Harold and Vera Connor, Daryl and Virginia Hubbard, and his uncle, Kurt Connor. But he's also survived by an amazing family. And first off, he's survived by his wife, Erin Chandler Connor. Or sweet mama. Or just a little person. And I know that he was your big person. And nobody thought of Jeff without Aaron and Aaron without Jeff. And I know he would constantly try to make you laugh. And whenever he would cut a joke and you wouldn't laugh at it, he'd be like, am I not funny anymore? I mean, what's the problem? And when y'all were in an argument, he would harass you. He would pester you. Until you laughed, and he'd be like, we're okay now, right? We're, everything's good, right? It's just so Jeff Connor. I do know this, though, Aaron. I, I can't imagine. I mean, I, we, we can all empathize. We can only imagine what's going through your mind right now. But every person in this room, I know they all agree with me. That you put everything aside. And you put him first in your life. And you were by his side every single step of the way. You never left his side. And I want you to know, and everybody else would agree with me, that you aced it as his wife. Absolutely aced it. He's also survived by three children. His first child, Chandler Connor. Everybody knows Chandler. He's known as Chan Man. And uh, when Chandler played sports, uh, he loved to play sports. And Jeff loved to coach all the kids in sports. And I don't know if y'all know this or not, though, but Jeff had the dubious honor of being kicked out of an upwards basketball game. <laughs> How do you get kicked out of an upwards basketball game? I mean, only Jeff Connor got <coughs> kicked out of an upwards basketball game while he was coaching his family. A little too competitive at the time. And, uh, but I know that right there towards the end of Jeff's time here on earth, that many times on Sunday morning, Chandler and, and Jeff, they would, they'd watch church together online. Aaron and the other kids would go to church and in person. And he would just have that moment with Chandler watching church together and worshiping together. And I know it just meant the world uh, to Jeff. And he's also survived by Emma Kathleen Connor. And everybody knows this is Daddy's little girl. And she always got whatever she wanted all the time. And sometimes whenever the boys or Aaron would ask Jeff for something, 
And Jeff be like, no, no, we're not doing that right now. They go, hey, you my cat's like, go ask Dad. He'll give it to you. Every time. He, she would go, hey, Dad, please. Okay. You can have it. And then, I don't know if y'all know this or not, but Emma Kathleen was valedictorian of her graduating class. She was first out of about 150, but Jeff made it very clear that she got that from him because he was valedictorian of a class of two. He was first out of two. I mean, he had a 50-50 shot, but he just said, hey, you got it from me. And uh, I know that you, you guys had a blast together. You would make up songs, you'd make up hand motions, all the things, and I know that not too long ago, y'all went on your last date, you loved going on dates with your dad, and y'all went and watched the movie together, and I just know that just meant the world to him, just to be with you. That is in the world. And he's also survived by Winston Connor. Everybody knows him as Greenish. <laughs> His name is Greenish. And um, I know you played travel soccer all over the South. Y'all just went everywhere, and you and your dad... I mean, y'all were road warriors. And y'all would go together and just drive hours upon hours to get to your games. And you just had a blast doing that with your dad. And I know that y'all were, you were his hunting buddy. And he loved to hunt with you. And he talked about you all the time. And everybody in this room knows that you, you sound like your dad. You look like your dad. You had your dad's hair. And all the guys that are getting a little older, we're jealous of your hair. And um, you had your wit like your dad. And you're just so much like your dad. And your dad was so proud of you. So, so proud of you. Jeff is also survived by his parents, David and Sandy Connor. And David, we were talking, Aaron and I, and the kids were just talking about you and everything you instilled in Jeff. And how you would, you taught him a great work ethic. You taught him to be the best in whatever he did. He just wanted to be the best. He would go to his boss and he would just be like, hey, how can I get better? How can I improve? And he just took so much from you. And I hope you know how proud he was of you. He was so proud of you. He had so much respect for you. And um, I know you're proud of your son. And uh, Miss Sandy, I know that he always looked forward to coming by your house. He loved it when y'all moved to Northwest Arkansas. And he, came to Northwest, he, he would always love to go up there. He'd come by and visit you. He started getting really protective of you here in these latter years. And he was always checking on you, making sure that you were okay. And Aaron said, once y'all would get on the phone call forever, she was like, he was just, she would be like, all right, Jeff, night, night. Because y'all were going to talk forever. Long phone calls. And I know you cherished those phone calls. I know both of you are so very proud of your son, as you should be. And then, he's also survived by his sister, Amy. Bobby, I really want to say Katan, but it's Katie. <laughs> Amy, Katie, and several people around here, Amy, I don't know if you know this, but there's several of us that know you, Mandy, some of us have gotten to know you, we all nicknamed you Angel, because you seem like an angel. And um, I have to tell you, I know your family talks about just how close you and Jeff were. And, you know, a lot of siblings, they don't want to be known as the little sister or the little sister or whatever. Like, they want to have their own, you know, persona. And they want to be their own person. But I know about you, you love you being known as Jeff's little sister. You cherish that. And you two are just inseparable. As little kids, and you decided to go on a trip to Italy. Jeff said, "Well, I'm going to go with you. We're going to let you know you go over there alone." And you decided to get baptized over there. He said, "Well, I'll get baptized too." And y'all just did everything together. And I know how much you loved your brother, and I know how much he loved you, and y'all just had a special bond, that very unlike most brothers and sisters. And he's also survived by many family members, many cousins, many nieces, many nephews, and of course, a host of friends that he adored, and several dogs that he cherished as well, many dogs. And so right now, he has two amazing friends that are going to come up and share some words. I'm going to ask Jeff Cald Caldwell to come up first, and then Scott's going to come up in just a few minutes. Well, 
Wow, good looking crew out here today to uh, celebrate Jeff's life. <coughs> you know, 1 Thessalonians 5.11 tells us that friends encourage us to do the highest good. And as we gather here to celebrate Jeff's life, I find myself still struggling to capture in words the essence of a person who is not just a friend, but a beacon of light, a pillar of support, and quite frankly, a source of an ending joy and laughter in all of our lives. But I had to start somewhere. And so I'll start with this. Jeff and I became friends through our kids at uh, Baker Elementary and through Arkansas United Soccer, which I know there's a lot of ties in this room to both of those uh, organizations. But whether you knew Jeff from work, school, or sports, when it came to being a friend, Jeff was truly extraordinary. And I think it's, it's easy to start with the obvious. Um, friends make you laugh. If there's ever a monetary value on laughter, each of us, I think, would be a millionaire. Jeff knew that we don't make connections to each other because we laugh, but we laugh because we recognize our connection. And I know each of you have been in a situation where you had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Jeff, and the next thing you knew, you had a multitude of people around you. It was probably because you were laughing, and they wanted to be a part of it. He always found a way to make a connection with folks he encountered, whether it was in a restaurant in Colorado, whether it was in a stadium on top of a mountain, or even in the hospital. And while he had a humorous side to him, Jeff was, as Pastor Harry said, uniquely competitive. <laughs> while you and Jeff as a soccer coach, probably, or a basketball coach, and an avid spectator, I knew him as a referee's worst nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I know there are United or Robinson fans, uh, friends here today, uh, that probably can recall when one of our players would commit the most egregious foul ever made in history sports, and Jeff would somehow very vocally let the referee know that he made the wrong call. <laughs> but what you may not have seen is after the game, him go up to the referee and thank the referee or apologize. And it was a very unique trait about Jeff Connor where he could take something and then just let it go. As a friend, you can always count on Jeff to be a part of your cheering squad or a comforting shoulder. I think even with all the different kinds of chaos that Jeff had in his life, he would always steer the focus of the conversation back to you. And I don't know if you ever noticed that, but when I was talking with Jeff, I'd say, hey, how are things go?" And he'd spend 15 seconds talking about his own life but somehow the next 30 minutes of conversation would be about you. And he did that so that he could listen to see how he could celebrate you as a person or how he could pray with you. And quite honestly, I think he taught a lot of us to do the same. But what, what I think made Jeff was truly uh, his adventurous spirit. And if you notice all the photos on the screen, 90% of them were, were outdoors. And I think you could tell that about Jeff, and he was just adventurous. I mean, he liked to do things, think things, feel things, but more importantly, he liked to do things with you. Jeff was a double black diamond skin, I think. But he was, to me, a guy I asked on multiple occasions, did you not hear them setting up the explosives for the avalanche control? Are you trying to kill us? And Jeff responded to a reference to the Hunger Games and talked us into getting on the ski lift. But we did it because we trusted him, right? And it was easy to trust him. Because I think it was a trust in which we were able to connect with him, whether in that simple conversation or a deep discussion for 30 minutes. It was easy to let your guard down, as Pastor Harry said, when you were around him. Because there was no fear of criticism from Jeff. He was always transparent. My Angela reminds us that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, 
but people will never forget how you made them feel. You always knew how you felt when you were around Jeff Conner. And I hope that we can take that lesson with us in our lives. And as I looked through my thread of text this week, it reminded me of Jeff's most important quality. You will never have a better friend than one that points you to God. The Lord was Jeff's shepherd, and his life not only pointed you in that direction, but he led the way through a beautiful journey, a voyage, a voyage marked by the hallmark of genuine camaraderie and mutual respect. A journey that reminds us to embrace our lives with the tenacity, the compassion, the thankfulness, and the selflessness just the way he lived. And of course, one surrounded by friends and by laughter. So I should have tricked coming up the stairs. <clears throat> that would have been so Jeff Conner, wouldn't it? <laughs> if I get emotional, uh, up here, and I'm not promising that I won't. It's because the worship time was incredible. Thank you for that, Harry. Thank you for yours. And it, I feel overwhelmed by the presence of our sovereign Lord in this place today. Um, you know, Jesus was with his 12, uh, and there were, I don't know how many others, hundreds of other people. And Jesus began to orate the greatest sermon ever preached. And during that sermon, he said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I've quoted that scripture so many times that my family rolls their eyes when I do it. But I think I've quoted that scripture so many times because it's been never more fitting than it is today. Because Jeff Conner's heart was pure. And to know him, you know that to be true. He had a pure heart, and there's no doubt in my mind that right now he is face to face with him. And you're hearing his laughter when you hear the words that I'm saying when he says, this is so awesome. <laughs> because it is. Jeff Connor loved well. And everyone in this place knows that he loved well. Aaron, you were the it in his life. There's no doubt about it. You were the it in his life. And just because we wrote, help me, on the bottom of his shoes at your wedding day for everyone to see as he knelt at the altar. That doesn't mean he needed the help. It was just a joke, okay? So, just a joke. Because he married well. He married, he married Jackie. And the thing that I have witnessed throughout is that you two did marriage well. You did marriage as the Lord intended marriage to be done. So something to be proud of, and you have raised an incredible family. And Chandler, who's not in here right now, but Chandler was his first, and that is so incredibly special. There's only that only happens one time uh, to be the first, uh, which is incredible. And I call her Emmeline, but <laughs> Emmeline, you as Jeff said, as Harry said, you, you're you're the daughter, and. It's so interesting because my family is the same order, son, daughter, son, and, and Noah's about to enter into this family and, and excited about that, and we've had to test the waters for you, Noah, because it's a little unsure about how that's going to go, but Emma, Emily, and I know that you and your dad were always silly together, and the videos you would send of YouTube being silly, we just cracked up all the time because it's what you did together. It's so fun. And then Grinnies, I'm glad that, that Harry, you said Grinnies because that's what we call him all the time. He's <laughs> just never without a smile on his face, right? Always smiling, always laughing. I know he enjoyed those hunts with you all the time. And, and now you're going to have to be my best audience because you are, I see your dad and you in every phase. You, you're like him. You engage with people like he did. You are friendly. You are you're joyous. You have laughter, all those things. And you guys have a legacy forever. And I see Jeff and, and, and all of you uh, something to be proud of. You know, the first time I met Jeff, I, I remember thinking afterwards, man, that guy's so nice and friendly. 
And the second time I interacted with Jeff, I thought to myself, man, that guy's so nice and friendly. <laughs> and the third and the fourth time and the fifth time, I'm like, oh, come on. When is the shoe going to drop on this guy? And he's going to show me his real self. But you know what he was? He really was. He was showing me who he was because that never changed. It never changed. Jeff has always been who he is. And David and Sandy, I look at you and well done raising an incredible man. An incredible man who loves the Lord. And I know you were proud of him and I know that he loved you and was very proud to be your son. And Amy, a lot's been said about you as well, and I totally agree. The angel called on because I've really enjoyed getting to me, to know you even better during the time. Um, and you two were so close and, and just shared a lot together, shared life together, the ups and the downs and all of those things. And I know you were always right there by your side along with Bobby. Um, Bobby, you were a rock star this, this last several days and weeks. Anytime, you know, it's, it's, it's been said a couple of different times, but when you interacted with Jeff, you felt like you were the only person in the room. Mm -hmm. And you felt like, you walked away going, I must be the funniest person on the planet. <laughs> and trust me, you're not. You probably cracked some good jokes, but Jeff just made you feel that way. And you never walked away from a conversation with Jeff feeling worse than when you engaged him. You always walked away feeling better. That's a great characteristic and a great thing to have. We had family gatherings all the time, as you can imagine. And our family gatherings, there's a lot of people. So we had multiple tables. And one thing I noticed over time was that the kids never complained about sitting at the kid table. Because that's where Jeff sat. He didn't sit at the adult table. He would go sit at the kid table, and they had the best time. He'd make faces. They'd crack jokes. They'd laugh. I think they even threw food at each other. I'm not sure. But over the course of time during that meal, you'd see a couple of adults migrate over to the kid table because that's where the fun was happening. But that was just Jeff, right? That's just your dad, your husband. He just was always fun. Jeff and I uh, were in the same industry and there was a period of time during the course of our 20 plus years in the uh, pharmaceutical industry that we covered some of the same areas. So there were times where I covered Jonesboro and whenever I was able to go schedules would be able to, you know, kind of coordinate, we were always so productive. Because I called Jeff, and we do our thing, but on those days, somehow or another, we had 18 appointments with Dr. Sage Meadows. <laughs> so productive. Sage Meadows is a great golf course up there. <laughs> And we would play, have 18 appointments. Some appointments were great, others were not so great, but I guarantee you the conversation is always strong and solid, talking about life. You can imagine the laughter that took place, and I was always richer for those opportunities to get together and do that. And he might he'd hit back shots, and he might slice one off into the woods, or duck hook one into the drink, and he'd go, oh, crumb! <laughs> about as solid as it got from Jeff Connor. It's been mentioned, too, that we also had the opportunity uh, to coach together. We did see uh, his competitive nature, but we coached our boys, flag football team, Chandler was on it, Will was on it, Doug Wyatt Chandler was on it, uh, Jackson Fry, Andrew Cook was on it, and Rusty Fry and I would coach with, with Jeff Connor, and naturally, Rusty and I were the bad cop to Jeff's good cop most of the time. Uh, but there were, there were times where you know, Jeff would, would jump in there and Rusty and I would be glad to step back and watch the magic happen, you know, when he, when he would jump in there. And so we could never understand why seven and eight year olds couldn't get the concept of these specific routes we wanted them to run in our flag football. So we, we, we had a route that we wanted them to run just, just a simple 10 yard in, right? A, a 10 yard in. And so they, you know, they was a little bit confused. They were running all over the place and doing their thing. So we put in their minds the number seven, right? Because the seven is, you know, sharp. You just draw it down, and so you run out 10 yards sharp, sharp left, right? So that became known as sharp seven. Sharp seven, he would get the word, and our guys would be running question marks out there, right? They wouldn't, they wouldn't really know what they were just kind of wandering on, picking daisies or something, but 
and Jeff had had enough. And he jumps in there and goes, come on, guys, sharp seven, sharp seven. We're going to run here. And he would demonstrate it and do his 10-yard in. But, you know, Jeff would never leave it at that. He would never let them feel discouraged or down. So he would always end it with something positive. And it would always be, sharp seven, come on, sharp seven. Sweet boy. <laughs> <laughs> so Jeff, right? And those are the things that always came out of Jeff Parker. Something positive. Something encouraging. Something that lifted you up. And it's because he was pure in heart. Man, that's so well done, Jeff. Scott looks so good. These guys have been Jeff really, really well. Um, I was talking to family. A few days ago, we were talking about the service here today, and we talked about me just sharing a brief full quarter. I'm going to keep it very brief, and uh, it's going to help you guys out some. But it was very clear immediately what, we, what I was going to talk about. And uh, it was going to be the 23rd song. Jeff, on his desk, he had a thumbprint on his desk, and on that thumbprint was the 23rd song. I think they got a picture of it, maybe. Look at that. That, that was on Jeff's desk, and this is the words of the 23rd song. The song was so important to this family and it left this mark on them. And the 23rd song is probably the most famous song of all. We, we all know it. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down every passage. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Although I will walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Your rod and your staff that will comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Such a beautiful, beautiful song. And but I think it's important to know when you when you read this song, you gotta understand the context of this song. See, we all know David, King David, we all know about David and Goliath, right? Everybody remember the felt board in school or in Bible school and you would have uh, David killing Goliath and all that, but, but here's what we also got to remember is that David went on to be the greatest king in Israel, but then also David, he messed up a lot. And I like reading about David because it makes me feel better about myself when I mess up. But David also, he lost three children. And not everybody remembers that part. And I think it's important to remember that because you know, moments like this and trying to think about you guys and trying to think about friends and family and words to, to help you and comfort you. And, you know, I've not lost a son. I've not lost my son. And I've not lost my dad. So I don't, can't fully understand what you guys are feeling. But I know this, David, he got it. Like David buried three children. David understood what lost was like, and here's what he, and I want to point out four quick things, really quick things, and we're going to, we're going to worship again. The first thing he said was, the Lord is my shepherd. After the greatest loss, some of the greatest loss, he said, the Lord is my shepherd. That, that phrase right there means so much to me. I remember 15, 20 years ago, I, I remember before I went into ministry, and, and um, I was in, in the business world about 20 years ago, and I remember there would be different times I would struggle with anxiety. Sometimes I'd be going down the road, and I would literally just start yelling out in my car, The Lord is my shepherd. And I'd be just yelling at the top of my lungs over and over, The Lord is my shepherd. I know the people next to me thought I was crazy. They're like, oh, man, we got to get away from this guy. What is going on over there? But it just was amazing the comfort it brought to me. And I know Jeff knew he had this sitting there on his desk. He knew, The Lord is my shepherd. The second thing he says that's so important today for you guys is, David in verse 4 says, He restores my soul. There is nothing on this planet that can restore your soul like Jesus did. And I think that Jesus said, He said, I must go away that the Holy Spirit could come, the Comforter, the Advocate, the Spirit of Truth. And I just pray that you're just going to press in tight to the Holy Spirit right now and let Him <coughs> restore your soul. Just like David knew, David said, He restored my soul. And then David said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he said, I will fear no evil. He said, because my God is with me. David made it very clear that we don't have a cruel God. 
We play this cruel game, hide and seek. That when we start going through the dark times of our life, God's not like, hey, I'm going to come on the other side. I'll just meet you when you come out the other side. No, that's not at all what David said. David said, no, he walked with me. The whole time, he was with me the entire time. And I know that as this family, y'all have felt the Lord walking with you every single step of the way through this dark valley. You felt the Lord. And then lastly, I love this part. It says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I know that Jeff is dwelling in the house of the Lord forever. That makes me, just give me so much comfort. It also reminds me, too, when he got a, I just don't know if you guys know this, he got a call from Russell Wilson a couple days before he passed. Now, Jeff's a big Broncos fan. Jeff, you proud of me. I got my orange tie. I got my blue suit. You got the Broncos colors on. It's all for you. Um, but Russell Wilson called him. Quarterback for the Broncos talked to him for 25 minutes, and after a few minutes, Jeff looked at Aaron and said, "Have I already died?" <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "Have I already died and gone to heaven?" <laughs> but here's what Jeff knew: it is he knew where his eternal home was. He knew I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever, and I just pray that brings you some comfort because this is it hurts right now. And the only thing that gets us through is just knowing that He is there in heaven. In His heavenly body, He is healthy. He's running around laughing at everybody. He's cutting up. And uh, He's pulling pranks on them. Probably on Moses and Paul and some of them. He's pulling pranks on them. They're like, who does this guy? <laughs> but He's bringing a lot of joy. So I just want to pray for you guys right now. We're going to worship again. But if you would, just bow your heads right now. Lord, I just thank you right now. I just pray if there's anybody in here. They're uncertain if they're going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That they would ask you, Lord Jesus, to be their Lord and Savior. Because there's only one way to heaven. Jeff didn't get to heaven because he was a good person. Jeff is a good person. He's one of the best people I've known. But the reason Jeff's in heaven is because he bowed his knee to Christ. Because he humbled himself. And he said, I need a Lord. I need a Savior. And Jesus, you are mine. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through him. And that's why Jeff's in heaven. If there's anybody in here today, I know Jeff would love nothing more than if you're in here today and you don't know Jesus, that you would find Jesus. That you would bow your knee to Christ. Jeff's Lord, his Savior. And so, Lord, just continue to comfort my friends. We're going to worship you one more time because you are worthy of our worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand. Let's worship one more time.